Okay, and uh, we are back. Um, okay, and I believe we left off on... Uh, I believe we left off on Romans 16 and 16. I mean, yes, 6, verse 6, verse 16. I mean, uh, chapter 6, verse 16. But let me reread it to myself so that I am sure. Yes, we did. So um, now the next reference is um, <clears throat> Romans 8 and 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay, and um, I'm just I'm just saying like nothing can make that happen. This um, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit uh, is life because of righteousness. Nothing can make that happen, uh, but but God, Jesus Christ, He can only do that for you. Um, so if you want, I'm saying, if you want to be righteous in God's eyes, or you want to be right with God in your heart toward God, then wouldn't the only way to do that be the way that he provided? Mm? So if that's your goal, wouldn't the only way to achieve that goal be what God provided to achieve that goal? Jesus Christ is who he provided. So. Um, Romans 9 and 30. What shall we say then? that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness even the righteousness which is of faith okay um Romans 10 and 6 but the righteousness which is of faith Speaketh on the why, speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Second Corinthians six, verse seven and verse fourteen. Verse seven. And 14 I believe yes verse 7 by the word of truth by the power of God by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left uh, now 14 how do you the armor of, by the armor of righteousness uh, how do you get that through accepting uh Jesus Christ? Okay. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath unright hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Okay. That was verse 14. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 24. And just to explain, I'm like this. My energy is like this because I'm excited. I don't want anyone to feel off-put or like, Attacked. I'm just excited because I'm I'm reading right now. Okay, <laughs> now um, just so that you know that what it is. 
Okay, Ephesians 4 and 24. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Um, Ephesians 6 and 14. Only God can make you holy. Only God can make you righteous. Okay. Okay. Yahweh Mekadishkim. I believe I said that before, but you can look it up. Uh, it means um, the Lord who makes me righteous. The Lord who is my righteousness. Okay. 6.14 Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. 2 Peter 1 and 1 That's first Peter. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained that have obtained like precious like like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now um now we have finished um, going through uh, studying righteousness, the word righteousness uh, listed 1,343 um, in the back of the, the Hebrew Greek key study Bible. Um, in the beginning, if you remember, there were root words of the word that we just studied um, and they gave two words which that word derived from. Um, Dikeosune. And so those two words which Dikeosune derives from, one was Dikeos, uh, 100, 1,342, meaning righteousness. I mean, meaning righteous, excuse me, we just went over righteousness, uh, and dyke, 1,349, meaning justice or righteousness. Now, I do want to go over those uh, real quick, the two definitions that it has. And um, it reads, um, dyke, the basic meaning of the word involves the assertion by human society of a certain standard expected by its people and if not kept can mean the ensuing judgment. And so I wanna pause right there and go to Deuteronomy and use uh, the Israelites as an example of what he's talking about, um, ensuing punishment and um, the basic meaning of the word involves the assertion by human society of a certain standard expected by its people and if not kept can mean the ensuing judgment. And I actually will continue to read the rest of it. Thus, the rest of the de definition. Thus, it can be said that dyke is expected behavior or conformity, not according to one's own standard, but according to an imposed standard with prescribed punishment for nonconformity. It refers to legitimate custom. Now, if we look up the word legitimate, it means conforming to the law or to rules. Custom is a traditional and widely accepted way of behaving or doing something that is specific to a particular society, place, or time. And so, 
for the example um, of of what we just read, I want to go to uh, Deuteronomy 27. Uh, and I also want to read Deuteronomy 28. Um, I'll read it in the ESV. Here it is. So keeping that definition in mind, uh, now Moses, let me read it one more time. The basic meaning of the word, talking about dyke, the basic meaning of the word involves the assertion by human society of a certain standard expected by its people and if not kept can mean the ensuing judgment. Thus it can be said that dyke is expected behavior or conformity not according to one's own standard but according to an imposed standard with prescribed punishment for non-conformity it refers to legitimate uh, custom so not according to one's own standard the israelites it wasn't according to their standard it was according to god's standard um and if they didn't follow it, ensuing judgment would uh, fall upon them. And legitimate custom, uh, the, their law. Now, uh, Deuteronomy 27 now Moses, and this is an example of that definition. Now Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people saying, keep the whole commandment that I command you today. And on the day you cross over the Jordan, and on the day you cross over the Jordan to the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall set up large stones and plaster them with plaster, and you shall write on them all the words of this law. When you cross over to enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, and when you have crossed over the Jordan, you shall set up these stones concerning which I command you today on Mount Ebal, and you shall plaster them with plaster, and there you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall wield no iron tool on them. You shall build an altar to the Lord your God of uncut stones, and you shall offer burnt, burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God, and you shall sacrifice peace offerings and shall eat there. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, and you shall write on the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Uh, now curses from Mount Ebal. Then Moses and the Levitical priests said to all Israel, Keep silence and hear, O Israel. This day you have become, this is um, the example that I'm reading of an ensuing judgment. Um, that the definition discussed. Keep silent and hear, O Israel, this day you have come, you have become the people of the Lord your God. You shall therefore obey the voice of the Lord your God, keeping his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. That day, Moses charged the people, saying, When you have crossed over the Jordan, these shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand on Mount Isbal, on Mount Abal for the curse, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall declare to all the men of Israel in a loud voice, Cursed be the man who makes a carved or cast metal image, an abomination to the Lord, 
a thing made by the hands of a craftsman and sets it up in secret and all the people shall answer and say amen cursed be anyone who dishonors his father or his mother and all the people shall say amen cursed be anyone who moves his neighbor's landmark and all the people shall say amen cursed be anyone who misleads a blind man on the road and all the people shall say amen cursed be anyone who perverts the justice due to the sojourner the fatherless and the widow and all the people shall say amen Cursed be anyone who lies with his father's wife because he has uncovered his father's nakedness. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with any kind of animal. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with his sister, whether the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. And cursed be anyone who lies with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who strikes down his neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say amen. Cursed be anyone who takes a bribe to shed innocent blood, and all the people shall say amen. Cursed be anyone who does not conform the words, who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them, and all the people shall say amen. Now, blessings for obedience and then I will read curses for obedience um, and the reason why I wanted to read blessings for obedience because we were talking about um, well let me just read it and if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your room, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herd, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your blanket and your blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake and he will bless you in the land uh i just want to say all good things come from the lord um and that um he is the one uh that blesses you um the lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake and he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself. As he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of you, and the Lord will make you abound in prosperity. In the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground, within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you, the Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands and you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail and you shall only go up and not down if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you today being careful to do them and if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today to the right hand or to the left 
to go after other gods to serve them. Curses for disobedience. But if you will not, this is, um, again, ensuing judgment. Um, this is still the example for the definition. Um, but if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God or be careful to do all his commandments using the Israelites, uh, commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall you be, shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your room and the fruit of your ground, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you curses and confusion and frustration and all that you undertake to do until you are destroyed and perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilence stick to you until he has consumed you off the land that you are entering to take possession of it. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease and with fever, inflammation, and fiery heat, and with drought, and with blight, and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish, and the heavens over your head shall be bronze, and the earth under you shall be iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land powder from heaven dust. Will make the rain of your land powder from heaven. Dust shall come down on you until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and you shall be a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth and your dead body shall be food for all birds and of the air and for the beasts of the earth and there shall be no one to frighten them away the lord will strike you with the boils of egypt and with tumors and scabs and itch of which you cannot be healed the lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. This is the the judgment ensued if they didn't um, follow the law. And so if we don't accept Christ, um, God's given um, out uh, God's son, you know, God's provided ark to save us um you know what will happen to us this is just if they don't if this um nation that was to be holy unto God didn't uh follow his commandments now what will happen to us if we don't accept um Jesus Christ uh is what I'm saying what will what will happen if we reject um who God has provided um, for our salvation. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind, and you shall grope at noonday as the blind grope in darkness, and you shall not prosper in your way because he did die uh, for us and shed his blood for us. So what happens if we reject the shedded blood? Um, and you shall not prosper in your ways and you shall be only oppressed and robbed continually and there shall be no one to help you. You shall be troth a wife, but another man shall ravish her. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not enjoy its fruit. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat any of it. Your donkey shall be seized before your face, but shall not be restored to you. Um, your sheep shall be given to your enemies, but there shall be no one to help you. Your sons and your daughters shall be given 
to another people while your eyes look on and fail with longing for them all day long but you shall be helpless a nation that you have not known shall eat up the fruit of your ground and of all your labors and you shall be only oppressed and crushed continually so that you are driven mad by the sights that your eyes see the lord will strike you on the knees and on the legs with grievous boils of which you cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the crown of your head the Lord will bring you and your king, whom you set over you, to a nation that neither you nor your fathers have known. And there you shall serve other gods of wood and stone. And these things did happen to Israel. They were led into captivity. Um, and the prophets were sent to um, prophesy to them as to warn them before they were led into captivity but we're not there yet in our reading so I don't want to get too much into that but these things did happen okay and you shall become a horror a proverb and a byword among all the peoples where the Lord will lead you away you shall carry much seed into the field and shall gather in little for the locusts shall consume it you shall plant vineyards and dress them, but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes. And also, um, it's written um, in history that that did happen to the um, Israelites. They were taken um, into captivity by the Babylonians, I believe. Um, for the worm shall eat them. You shall have olive trees throughout all your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with oil, for your olives shall drop off. Um, and Jesus was on earth. There is, Jesus was on earth, and he said the things that he said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so... I'm just saying that God doesn't say things just to say them or say them and they're untrue. He's not a man that he should lie. And Jesus Christ was on earth and he did say the things that he said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And those things will not return unto him void. Everything that Jesus said and, and was teaching. You shall father sons and daughters but they shall not be yours um for they shall go into captivity when god was telling the israelites what will happen to them if uh they you know worshiped uh idol worship idols and other gods and they left uh the way of which he provided um, if they stopped following the commandments and they despised him he said what would happen to them and that's what happened to them the cricket shall possess all your trees and the fruit of your ground and that's is I'm saying that because that's an example of God's word not returning unto him void the sojourner who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Um, and these curses shall come unto you. And um, it is said in scriptures that the rages of sin is death. Um but Jesus came to cleanse us of our sins. So, uh, yeah. All these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you till you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes that he commanded you. They shall be a sign and a wonder against you and your offspring forever because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and gladness of heart because of the abundance of all things. 
Therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst, in nakedness, and lacking everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. Um, the, and so just come on board, okay, with what the Lord has provided. Okay. The Lord will bring a nation against you from far away, from the end of the earth, swooping down like the eagle, a nation whose language you do not understand a hard-faced nation who shall not respect the old or show mercy to the young you shall eat the offspring of your cattle and the fruit of your ground until you are destroyed it also shall not leave you grain wine or oil the increase of your herds or the young of your flock until they have caused you to perish they shall besiege you in all your towns until your high and fortified walls in which you trusted in which yes until your high and fortified walls in which you trusted come down throughout all your land and they shall besiege you in all your towns and throughout all your land which the Lord your God has given you and you shall eat the fruit of your womb the flesh of your sons and daughters whom the lord your god has given you in the siege and in the distress with which your enemies shall distress you the man who is the most tender and refined among you will begrudge the food to his brother to the wife he embraces and to the last of the children whom he has left so that he will not give to any of them any of the flesh of his children whom he is eating because he has nothing else left in the siege and in the distress with which your enemy shall distress you in all your towns the most tender and refined woman among you who would not venture to set the sole of her foot on the ground because she is so delicate and tender will begrudge to the husband she embraces to her son and to her daughter her afterbirth that comes out from between her legs and her children whom she bears because lacking everything she will eat them secretly in the siege and in the distress with which your enemy shall distress you in your towns if you are not careful to do all the words of this law that are written in this book that you may fear this glorious and awesome name the Lord your God then the Lord will bring you bring on you and your offspring extraordinary afflictions afflictions severe and lasting and sickness is grievous and lasting and he will bring upon you again all the diseases of Egypt of which you were afraid and they shall cling to you every sickness also and every affliction that is not recorded in the book of this law the lord will bring upon you until you are destroyed whereas you were as numerous as the stars of heaven you shall be left few in number because you did not obey the voice of the lord your god and we are ending and as the lord took delight in doing you good and multiplying you so the Lord will take delight in bringing ruin upon you and destroying you. And you shall be plucked off the land that you are entering to take possession of it. And the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other gods of wood and stone, which neither you nor your fathers have known. And among these nations you shall find no respite. And there shall be no resting place for the sole of your foot, but the Lord will give you there a trembling heart and failing eyes and a, la and a languishing soul. Your life shall, have, shall hang in doubt before you. Night and day you shall be in dread and have no assurance of your life. In the morning you shall say, but we have assurance of our life through Jesus Christ. 
in the morning you shall say if only it were evening um there aren't talking about that but that is what um i remembered that is what brings comes to my recollection when i am reading this and at evening you shall say so i am saying thank god that the days of the law is over in evening you shall say if only it were morning because of the dread that your heart shall feel and the sights that your eyes shall see and the lord and in the morning you shall say if only it were evening and at evening you shall say if only it were morning because of the dread that your heart shall feel and the sight that your eyes shall see and the lord will bring you back in ships to egypt a journey that i promised that you should never make again and there you shall offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves but there will be no buyer okay um so we read that and i just want to point out that when we were reading 1,343 uh, further, which is further explanation of Dikeo Sune, which is righteousness, it did say that um, that righteousness fulfills the claims of Dyke, which in the case of the believer is God's claims. And in the case of the non-believer, yes, which is, yes, which is in the case of the believer, is God's claims. So righteousness um, fulfills the law. And the claims that God has um, because that law wasn't followed. And I will continue to because I, I I stopped reading it. And in the case of the non-believer, the claim of that higher authority, which a person adopts as his own standard. No, but I was right in not reading that because I was right in not reading that. Okay, because it has nothing to do with what I wanted to point out. Um, so the other word that they had there as being, um, what, uh, the Kyosune derived from was the chaos, D-I-K-A-I-O-S, and it is an adjective or adjective noun from dyke. Uh, meaning right justice, um, meaning right, uh, I forgot what that thing is, but it means right and justice used in the neuter. Neuter means, um, it's neither a uh, female or masculine, um, as far as grammar. Uh, used in the neuter to dikeon, that which is right, conformable to right, pertaining to right, that which is just, which is expected by the one who sets the rules and regulations whereby man must live, whether that be society or God. Therefore, that which is expected as duty and which is claimed as a right because of one's conformity to the rules of God or society. Or society. So, When used in the masculine or feminine as an adjective or an adjective noun and used of persons, it refers to the one who acts conformably, conformably 
to justice and right without any deficiency or failure. Who did that? Jesus. Only Jesus can, could have done that. Um, which is God himself. Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. Uh, and then there's such and the word was made flesh. Uh, that's Jesus Christ. The word was made flesh. And in Revelations uh, chapter 19 uh, verse 11 down if you read 11 down um it says that uh, in his name was the word of god and then that uh scripture they were talking about jesus when they were talking about uh he was on the horse and his vesture was dipped in blood and his name was the word of god they were talking about jesus okay and and right without any deficiency or failure thus it is applied to god John 17 and 25 and we're finishing Mark after Mark Luke John O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. Who knows the Father but the Son? And these have known that thou hast sent me. Um, Romans 3 and 26. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Um, so continuing after those reference scriptures, Christ as God, man. Um, Acts 3.14 So, so that we don't, um, I will go back a little bit. That which is, is an expected duty, which is claimed as a right because of one's conformity to the rules of God or society when used in the masculine or feminine as an adjective or an adjective noun and used of persons in it refers to the one who acts conformably to justice and right without any deficiency or failure. Thus, it is applied to God, Christ, as the God-man. And then we'll see Acts 3 and 14. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Oh, I'm sorry. Acts 3 and 14. That's, yeah, because I was like, this is a... Uh... This is that situation with Pilate. Oh! So yeah, Acts 3 and 14, that was that, yeah, okay. Um, 7, Acts 7 and 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them 
which showed before of the coming of the just one, Jesus Christ, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and mur murderers whom they murdered. Um, 22 and 14, Acts 22 and 14. And Isaiah, and the prophet Isaiah definitely predicts, I mean, prophesies of the coming of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Um, I won't go there in this video, but if you type in Google, the prophet Isaiah talking about Jesus, it will come up. 22 and 14. And he said, the God of our fathers hath chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're going to see Jesus. Okay. First Peter 3 and 8. Amen. First Peter 3 and 8. Shoot. I am trying to go see Jesus. Yes. First Peter. That's I'm trying to go. Mm-hmm. Um, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, oh. 3 and 18, yes, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he, for the just Christ, for the unjust, us, that he might bring us to God. He's the only way. That he might bring us to God. You can only get to the through, to the Father through the Son. Um, by believing on Jesus Christ, that's the only way that you can get uh, to God. That's the only way that you can get there. To heaven. Uh, being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit um that was first peter 3 and 18 now we've got to first john 2 and 1 uh, and then i got to go my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. The righteous. Amen. And so, may, a Lord, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading um, of that word. And that will be it for... Uh, today um and the commentary for today um and I hope that that I hope that amen okay